Hello, welcome. In this problem, we are asked to find the domain of this equation. And I, that's, that's the instruction. So if you want, pause the video, try it on your own, and then we'll solve it together in a moment. All right, so domain, right? How do we do this? Well, I'm thinking that on a graph, you've got an x and a y axis. And x refers to the domain values of your function. And y refers to the range values of your function. So they're asking us what x values can we plug into this function and still have the output y be a real number. That's the implied part of the question. What can we plug into it and still get a real number? A real number is not an imaginary or complex number. So no i's, no square roots of negatives. So the first thing to realize is that the log of x, that the domain of this <coughs> expression I'll make it a function. The domain of this function is where x is greater than 0. Why is that? Well, if you think about, let's say, log of 0, why does this have no answer? Right? Why is it undefined? Well, here x is 0, so that's not in the domain. It doesn't work. But intuitively, this is a log base 10. And this is saying 10 to some power equals 0. But that's not possible. right? There's no power of 10 that gives us 0, right? Powers of 10 might divide 10 or multiply 10, but you can never take, you can never start at 1 and divide by 10 over and over and over again, even negative exponents, and you'll never reach 0. So essentially, you can never reach 0 with a power of a base. So x has to be larger than 0. That's our domain. When you see an equation like this, it looks a little bit different, but the idea is essentially the same. The log of, what is it, 3 x, no, oh, sorry, a half of x minus 1. This time, uh, I want to know what x values can I plug into this expression. So the whole thing, 1 half of x minus 1 is greater than 0. So just solve for x there. And that will, that will be the first part of our domain. We add 1 to both sides. Okay, a half of x is bigger than 1. Double both sides, x is bigger than 2. So that's our domain so far. But there's another restriction in our equation here. <coughs> Excuse me. We have square roots. And again, uh, in our case, originally for a logarithm, right, the domain is big, where x is bigger than 0. And in our case right here, we've kind of shifted that domain around. So we said it's bigger than 2. So kind of shifted over here, let's say. And our domain, I'll put an asymptote here, 1, 2. Right, so far, anything bigger than 2 is OK. That's our asymptote an equation where x equals 2. And the other part, the other restriction is our square root. If we want to get uh, real numbers, we have to take the square root of things that are larger, uh, equal to or larger than 0. So in general, if I go back to this, if I say, well, what about this function, the square root of x equals y? That domain originally would be x is bigger than or equal to 0. So in this case, 1 half, because you take the square root of 0, right? That's just 0. This expression needs to be larger than or equal to 0. So just solve this. I'm going to double everything. So we have x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0 and add 3. So that, that part of our domain tells me x can be any number larger than or equal to 3. Over here, this number says x is bigger than 2. We have to put these together because the x values we use need to work for both expressions. So values larger than 2 work for the first term in the expression in the equation, excuse me, x is greater than or equal to 3 works for the second term in the equation. But what will work for both? Well, the final domain here is where x is larger than or equal to 3. Any value larger than or equal to 3 will satisfy the square root domain and the logarithmic domain. All right, I hope that helped.